Hi, I'm Supervisor Ed Wareheim, and you're watching Historic Smithtown. Welcome to Historic Smithtown. On today's show, we're going to look at one of the historic gems in the town of Smithtown, in the hamlet of St. James, the St. James General Store. It has been in existence for over 160 years and is the oldest working general store in the U.S. It is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is currently run by the Suffolk County Parks Department, which also runs the Big Duck in Flanders. The store is located in the Deep Wells Farm Historic Park boundaries. The store was opened in 1857 by Ebenezer Smith, a descendant of Richard Bull Smith, the founder of Smithtown. St. James in 1860 was located north of North Country Road. There was a concentration of about 30 homes, most of them on Riches Road, Three Sisters Road, and Harbor Hill Road. As you enter the store, you will be transported back to the 19th century. The wooden floors and counters are all original. The general store was the hub of the community. Since the post office was located within the store, it became the central meeting place where the town's people would gather to wait for the mail and catch up on local gossip. The first telephone was installed at the store which turned it into a community center. There were parties, dances, and seasonal celebrations held in the large room upstairs. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, celebrities who lived in St. James or visited signed the store ledger. William Gaynor, mayor of New York, Stanford White, world-famous architect, Lionel Barrymore, Ethel and John Barrymore, Lillian Russell, Maud Adams, Buster Keaton, Irving Berlin, and heavyweight champion James J. Corbett. These celebrities mingled with farmers, fishermen, and tradesmen of the town. Rumor has it that Stanford White would conduct his business on the telephone at the general store. The store ownership has changed hands over the years, and in July in 1990, Suffolk County and New York State gave the store $110,000 to preserve the store. There are displays of ledgers and old photographs and museum cases. Items from the Victorian era line the shelves as well as general merchandise for sale such as candies, soaps, books, and many other items. Some of the period items contained in the store is a post office, coffee grinder, tea canisters, pop belly stove, barrels, and many other items let visitors have a look at what Long Island was like in the early 19th century. The store not only sells items, but also acts as a museum for common items that people would need back in the day, such as medicine, clothing, and farming items. The St. James General Store has been used as a location for various TV and film projects, including a Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages commercial with James Earl Jones and a Maxwell House commercial with Margaret Hamilton as Cora, who also played the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. We spoke to Richard Martin, the Director of Historic Services for the Suffolk County Parks Department, about what the store was like since its inception back in 1857. Well, the, the St. James store, its tagline is it's the lo longest running store in its original location that's never closed to the public. Some can dispute that as you go across the country. There's other stores that are old, but I think this is unique that it's such a community center and it's always been the center of the activities here in St. James. And even when you drive into town, the signs that say, Welcome to St. James, have a picture of the store. As far as I know, this again, this has always been the center of town. Uh, it was built, actually, in the center of town in 1857. And people don't realize how the village of St. James moved from the riverfront, initially, when it was settled in the 1600s, and came up and settled in this area in the 1850s. So that's when it was first established. P 
people don't always realize also the, the original store is the back part of the building. It's not the front. The front part was built in 1894 and it's, it's all original here. If you walk around downstairs, all the original counters, it's like in a U shape there. I'm original to the site, the floors are all original and we've maintained it that way uh, since the county purchase. Today, you know, everyone calls it the St. James General Store and that is what it was called throughout its life. But I think people don't appreciate what its true uh, use was. And in modern times, I'd call it the grocery store. I think there's a King Cullen in town. This was the early King Cullen. If, and you would probably come here on a very regular basis, maybe even every day, to get your fresh, fresh food. Since you didn't have frozen food at the time, you didn't have packaged goods, you didn't have canned goods like we have today. So again, it became the community center because you were here a lot and you would have met all your neighbors here. Eventually the telephone was installed at the turn of the century. So you would come here, you would make your personal phone calls. And the post office was also located within the building. What was unusual compared to today, you came into the store and today you see the counters full of stuff and items. And those would have been completely cleared. You would have had people standing behind the counters, if you see some of the historic photos, almost like they're in the military with aprons on to serve the, the people the food. So you would not walk in like you do a supermarket today and pick items off the shelf yourself. You would point and say, I'll have that, I'll have that. Or you'd come in for your weekly allotment of butter or bread, and they would probably even know your order by heart. And you'd also have the barrels you know, set in front, let's say for pickles or other foodstuffs that would have been in the center of the room. But it was a lot of service. There was definitely more than one person here and it would have been handed to you over the counter and many of the larger accounts, everything would have been done on credit. St. James, this area might have had about 30 houses when it was established in 1857. So that's, you know, mid 19th century small town. What changed this area radically was when the Long Island Railroad came through in 1872. And that uh, really moved the center of town from this area over to Lake Avenue and all the stores started to be built there. This store still hung on actually through the early 20th century, served uh, the estate people. A lot of these people from New York like Mayor Gaynor came out on the weekends or might have been out here actually the whole summer. Stanford White is a well-known personality, was an architect that lived right down the road. His name is in the account books. And so you had much larger estates, but again, summer homes, weekend homes that were built throughout the area. The Barrymores were in the area. There were a lot of vaudevillians, uh, entertainers that came out here. There were a number of hotels that they're not staying anymore that were in the center of town, of the corner of North Country Road and Lake Avenue. And again, they would come out for weeks at a time, whatever, but that was in a summer routine that people would come out here once the railroad uh, was easy access to come to St. James. The room we're sitting in now is on the second floor, and this was a community uh, room where they would have meetings and probably was also used for storage for the store. And this is where we do have our books, our local history, and we do have people come here that uh, have books hiding. This is the 1890s now we're talking about. This was built in 1894, that they could have come up here and had an evening event. Because of what we view the importance of the building and the site here, Suffolk County, with the help of New York State Grant, purchased this site in 1990 and we added it to the parklands that we already had across the street. Deep Wells had already been acquired by Suffolk County. So now it's again a community center continuing and it has the protections of the Suffolk County Historic Trust landmark status and it's also on the National Register. So we are hoping that it'll remain an active store use and it's really a, also an active museum that people can come in and see what it was like at the turn of the last century. People forget uh, where, how things developed over time and we start to just assume things are the way they are now where you go into a store and everything's just packaged for you and there's not fresh merchandise. 
and that's actually a movement today for organic food, you, you hear that. So this is kind of showing in, in the past people did live a different way and they might have been healthier because of it and also how a community bonded and how they got to know each other. It was very personal contact, maybe compared to today's Facebook world. So I think that's important to keep and to show people how things work. Thanks to the efforts of the Suffolk County Parks Department and Suffolk County Historical Trust, the store is being preserved as it was for many more generations to come. The store is open year round. For more information, call the store at 631-854-3740 or go to www.suffolkcountynewyork.gov backslash departments backslash parks backslash r hyphen parks. I hope you enjoyed our look back at the past. For Historic Smithtown, thanks for watching. Thank you.